Hey, thanks for stopping by the Watercolor Methods YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe so you'll find out when we've got something new posted for you to watch. And maybe check out our website, watercolormethods.com, where we've got over 200 full-length, in-depth watercolor lessons and tutorials that you might like. In the meantime, let's take a look at this lesson. fairly light back here in the background and that means I put on a strip of that color I'm careful to paint I can paint through this tree a little bit but I need to paint around the roofs of these buildings and on this tree we're going to paint as carefully as we can around the major branches and the trunk down here the key to doing this is keeping the brush fluid, keeping the wash fluid so that you can mix and mingle things together nicely. Avoid getting streakiness in that wash. And it allows you to do careful work like I'm doing right now. And still being able to go back and pick up, uh, pick up that wash and to continue to work with it as you need. I can paint through this tree. I was starting to paint around it, but I can paint through that one. I can paint through this one because, again, I know those colors are going to be darker later. As I work my way farther down towards the middle ground, I simply am adding water here. And I've already started to pick up some Thick, slightly thicker color and dropped it in there which helps to simulate the look of distant trees. That background wash is wet. That allows me just to drop color in, let it blend and mix together. I'm going to work carefully along the edges of these buildings. A little bit of this color up here for some taller trees a little further into the background. Let's get more of that color in here and pull that color all the way down to the ground plane back here in the background. Now I've got Forsythia right in here. And we're going to work right back in pretty quickly and I'll show you what we're going to do. Try to get this a little darker in a couple places back here. Maybe up in here to start to simulate the look of maybe tree trunks and branches. And I'm going to start putting that in right in here. It's going to mix and mingle with that violet from the background. The warm yellow, the cadmium yellow, I'm going to get in a little bit of that over here. And again, let that mix and blend a little bit. With clear water on the brush, I just pull that yellow over to the right. More of my cool yellow up in here. In this case, I get some clear water and let that, so that edge soften and blend up. Ultramarine blue. I'm going to get that all over this ground plane here. There's actually a bit of a sidewalk or a path there. I'll leave some white for that. Getting it along here and again a little bit of a white path, maybe a sidewalk over there as well. There's a sidewalk here, but I'll get the grass on this side of it. Now there's going to be a lot of cast shadow over here eventually, but we'll start with this just to get the green that we need for the grass on the ground plane. The raw sienna will change the color just a little bit. We want it light. A lot of this area is catching sunlight, especially working our way down the street here. A little bit of green over here near where this tree is. Now, the colors are mixing and blending back in here, and that might disturb you. We're, you know, we like to keep our colors separate and clean, and I understand the impulse, but you're really okay if this happens, and if it's something that really bothers you, what you can do is clean out your brush and then blot it. 
and then just pick up some of that extra color. Eventually there's going to be more color on here. We'll be putting some shadows being cast across the street and that will all get changed and modified when we do that anyway. Let's get a stroke of that on there and see what it looks like. Notice I'm using the tip and sort of the side of the brush. And also notice I'm bringing it up to where the edge of the grass is. I stopped here because we want a different color of cast shadow on the green grass. I want to connect it to those shadows so that I say connect it to those shadows. Connect this color to the shadows that are on the pavement, the asphalt pavement, so that we see that these are shadows that continue. They start way down here, they work across the asphalt pavement, they get to this grassy area, and because this is grass, it's green, not red violet so the color of the shadow changes and I try to make sure there's a connection between what's happening here and here the one dangerous thing about changing these colors is that they can break up the connection so one of the ways to fix that connection is to do this just get some water on the brush and blend let those areas blend together and again with a little bit of water on the brush I just make sure that there's good connections between each of those little sections of cast shadow. Since I have that in and I'm working with it, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush now, and actually a much smaller brush, and get some of that in over here. Again, we've got green grass. This side of the grass is probably not catching much light, so I'll get some of this darker green in for that back there and back here, and actually it'll, it'll help me show off both the tree and this edge of the grass here on the near side of the road. And then there's a deep cast shadow here. It comes down across the grass, goes across that path or sidewalk, and then across the lawn. Notice that I changed the shape of it. I've got a little curve here and here. That helps me show that this is not a flat lawn, but that there's some little bit of curviness to a little bit of irregularity that works its way across the lawn. And those cast shadows are great for showing that sort of thing. I'm going to get a little bit more of some cast shadow back in here coming across the lawns. Lighten it a little bit. I want to show them but I don't want them to be quite as dark as the shadows here in the foreground. The tree over here on the left would be casting a shadow also down maybe a little grassy area across the street which is relatively flat up onto the grass here and then maybe across the the grassy lawn down the grass here up on the grassy lawn over here I'm going to leave the white area again which is a sidewalk or some sort of path I'm going to connect it to this larger cast shadow that I've already got in and I need my color, my cast shadow color for the pavement, for the asphalt. Let me get that in. Make a couple marks. Maybe one back there. And then just for fun, there's a large area here in the, along this street that really doesn't have anything. And I can add a little bit more of this just to show, again, something off to the left, another tree casting a shadow across the road there. Mixture that we can use, for instance, on the roof of this house. It's kind of a neutral gray-brown. This roof is not catching light. It's uh, really in the shade. It's really not a shadow. It's not getting shadow, although we're going to put some cast shadows on there from trees. But it's away from the light, not catching direct light, so it's got some color and value to it, and that's what we're putting in now. One thing darker, but also more neutral. Uh, the branch of this tree is going to be dark, so I, I can paint right through that. Now notice how similar that color is to the colors around it, especially the colors in the background. I want to change that. I do want there to be a little bit of contrast and change there. I'm going to paint through this tree. Remember that when you paint through something like this, 
you probably don't want this hard edge to show. Since watercolor is transparent, you want to make sure that that's not a hard edge there. We're running through the tree itself. And that gives me a little bit of separation from the background. It changes the color a little bit, but it really gives separation from those trees back there in the distance behind the house. To show a reddish house, a reddish, probably a brick house, and in fact in the original painting the house that's there is a brick house. I'm going to paint around the window. Sometimes I paint through the windows, but in this case I'm going to paint around it. I'm keeping this wash nice and fluid because I do want to drop right at the corner. I want to drop some darker color in there. There's a roof here for a porch extension off that comes towards us. I'm going to paint carefully around that. There's a post that holds up the roof, then more of this color. And in fact, this is going to be pretty dark back under here. Again, there's another window or a door there, so I'm going to be careful and paint around that for the time being. And I dropped some dark color in here that has disappeared, so I'm going to go back with some more. I want it to be pretty dark right there at the corner. Blotted my brush and I'm going to blend this a little bit. All right, and then where these colors work around the forsythia, again, I'm going to get some clear water on the brush, blot it a little bit, soften that edge. I want a nice soft edge around the forsythia itself. This will look a little bit like the shady side of the forsythia, and hopefully you can see that kind of gray-brown, which we can put on the ground plane under these plants where maybe there's dirt rather than grass. And again, if I put it in while things are nice and wet, I get a soft blending. For this white house, the shady side, I'm going to go back in with a color that, again, is more or less the background color, those background trees. It's a light blend of burnt scarlet and ultramarine blue. I'm going to pull it down pretty far. And again, I'll blend with clear water. I'm going to let that have a soft... I'm going to get a little darker up here under the eaves. While that passage is still wet, I can put that dark color in, let it mix a little bit, blend it, encourage it a little bit if I have to with my brush, just to get a little darker up there. And as I did on the house here on the right, a little darker edge right there where we go from the lit side to the shady side. This is also a shady side of the house, similar color. I'm going to change it a little bit and actually warm it, and that means it's more red-violet than this. A little, more, a little brighter, a little less neutral. There's a post there, and then post here. Look how well the light is actually showing now in the painting with what we've done. The, the really very economical strokes, very easy techniques that we've used, and we've already got this nice light look in our painting. Burnt Sienna. And that gets us a really nice dark. Now part of this tree would be catching some light, so I'm going to leave a light edge right over here to the left. Get this dark color in, sort of running down, mostly through the middle of the tree. A little bit on these branches. Down here at the bottom, I, I use clear water on the brush to soften that up. And again, let that color serve as the light, the sunlight that's hitting the front of that tree. Blend those together well. Trees are cylinders, so they have what's called a core of the shadow, and that's what this darker area is on this tree. 
light raw sand up here where there's some light catching and I think on this branch at least initially very similar colors do the same thing on this tree I'm going to do it on this tree as well I get only the trunk and the major branches warmer color that will simulate a little bit of ambient light coming off the ground plane and the buildings behind. Warm those up a little bit, make it look like there's some bounced light in there. Now on our really light tree here where the sunlight is hitting so brightly, we'll get a little layer of very light raw sienna on it. First. It's a little thicker than I wanted, but it just looks like an area where maybe it's not catching quite as much light. Back on this side. Now we're not really showing the bounced light on this one because I want to keep it light and I don't want to put the core shadow in for that reason. We may add a little bit more shadow later, but I want to start with, again, this lighter application of paint on that tree. Down near the bottom of the trunk at the back where the shadows connect, I do get some darker color in there to really let let us see that that tree is catching light from the left and casting shadow or should be casting shadow to the right with that shadier color on the back side of the tree. And in fact, I see over here to the right of the doorway. This should have been painted in and I missed it. So we'll put that in. I say we're going to start the window. We're going to do both the window and the door. Up here on this part of what's essentially woodwork on that porch, this side of the post, we need a warm color for the roof. Not catching much light, it's turned away from the sun. I am just leaving a little bit of white sparkle here for this post. A little bit of white sparkle on that part of the roof and that's going to serve well enough to show the sunlight on uh, that part of that building. Just to show a little indication of a opening for a window there, maybe one up here. To show things like window openings. Here maybe we'll show a couple different panes. I'm just going to make some strokes of paint like that. I think there's another window here. We'll do the same thing. A mark, couple marks like that to show some more window openings on that side of the house. And I believe this is supposed to be a window here. It's so easy actually to get a really good looking effect with such minimal work. We've got another tree sitting back in here that comes out, sort of grows out between these two buildings. I shouldn't say between two, it seems to come out between the buildings here, but it's really sitting behind uh, the white building over there. And I'm just using that dark color uh, and some indications of trees, tree trunks, branches will really help complete that illusion back there of distant trees and maybe some sort of small forest back in there. This kind of work is really fun, but it's also easy to overdo it. So I encourage you to not overdo it. Do a little bit at a time, and then stop and take a look at what you've got. 
going to add some more tree trunks back in here. Indications of individual trees or maybe branches coming off of this tree. By adding initially the nice wet into wet application of color back here, we got a really great start on the distant tree line. It was easy to do and it creates a great effect, especially once you start adding little marks like this one, like these, I should say. And since we're working with that color, we can go ahead and add more branches to some of these trees that are closer to us. We've got the rigor in our hand, we've got the color out and ready. We can add these branches. When you're adding branches to trees like this, the one thing to remember, among many, I suppose, is not to add every branch. There's, it's not really necessary to add as many branches as you see on the trees that are out there in real life. What you need to do is add enough that the trees look real. They look like they're alive, for one thing, and that they've got enough Kind of complexity to them that they look like they're full like the branches are the trees are really full they have lots of branches um, reaching out in all directions in this case I've got some overlapping that house where you have for instance this one a branch crossing a branch that's overlapping another tree it's a good idea maybe to darken it if it's not light enough then darken it so that we can see the difference between the, this branch that's coming off of this tree and the tree that's back there. Window here on this house. I'm simply going to do that by getting some darker value in there. I'm letting the blue-gray that we put on initially stand in for shade or shadow on the light colored trim work. Now I'm putting in color that Essentially, it's as if we're looking through those darkened windows into the interior. The doorway, same thing. Uh, this time, I'm going to put maybe just one window at the top in this door, since it's a doorway and not a window. But then I'll get some of my more neutral color and indicate maybe edges of trim, decorations on the doorway itself. I don't need a lot here. Just an indication that this is something more than a window, and it's got some sort of decorative quality to it. I'm going to paint a little bit around these windows and their trim pieces just to keep those showing. I think our upper roof could be a little darker as well, so I'm going to do that. And what this does, these darker values, is just bring more emphasis here, which is what we want to do. I'll leave that for the moment. I'll get my rigor out again and start to show some of the stems and branches for the forsythia. As I was saying earlier with the branches on the trees, this is really something that you want to be careful with and do only what's needed, only what's necessary. With that same color, I think we can add some finer branches here off of this tree. It's close to us. We're not seeing a lot of its finer branch structure, which is higher up in the canopy, but we can add a little bit more, uh, actually darker value on this branch, and then maybe some branches coming down and swinging through the composition just a little bit, and more importantly, pointing us to our main subject, to those forsythia. So I've got these branches 
for this tree really pointing in the direction of those interesting forsythia plants really a great role and important function of tree branches I get a my smaller round I've got a lot of that same color from back in here the tree color the red violet the deep red violet I blotted it a little bit and that's going to allow me to get some indication with this rough brushwork of finer branches up in these trees. Like the doing the branches with the rigor itself, this is work that you can really do a lot less than you think. Great. I think we're done, but this is the stage at which you really it's a good idea to take the time to take a look at your painting, see if you really got the effect that you wanted, and really more importantly to see if there's something missing. Is there something I can add to really make this stand out and look like the painting that I envisioned when I started? So there it is. I hope you came out with a good result and you're happy with your work. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and the, and the beauty of spring that it brings with you. And just keep at it. You're bound to get better and improve all the time.